Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is. Kerbmeister Klotz, back in the garage, working on my GT40 kit car. It's a race car replicas kit car. Um, today, I'm working on the transaxle. So I pulled the transaxle apart, and uh, I should tell you it's a git trag. G96.31, which was from a 2005 911 Carrera S all wheel drive. But anyway, um, and this is a uh, wave track limited slip differential that I had put in the uh, transaxle. And the transaxle was rebuilt, and I got new sync rows. And but anyway, um, I wanted to uh, open up the transaxle and just check it out. Um, so anyway, this uh, particular bearing that was pressed onto this um, differential, this is a carrier bearing. It's junk. Um, I don't know why it got put back on this, but uh, it's junk. I'm going to remove it. So I bought some tooling. I was going to show you how that goes. Um, in the next day or so, I'll be installing the new bearing. And then after that, I'll be installing the differential back into the transaxle. And um, it'll be ready for the car. Stick around. Okay, I zoomed in. So this is that uh, carrier bearing. There'll be more pictures at the end you can see for yourself. And uh, I thought this was a nice setup. So I got this. These two halves grab the bearing. So put one on. And then this is the... Uh, the actual puller and I've already adjusted this distance and of course this is this pushes on the uh, differential itself and see if I can do that better So this is what it's what um what it pushes on. That sets right there. This thing uh grabs the bearing. There's both halves on, and there's a ring. Keep it from spreading. So that thing doesn't have to be too tight, but I could snug it up a little bit. All right, so that's all set up. Got my handy impact. So by driving this down, it should pull that bearing up. So this, this is the first time for me. Let's see how it goes. Boy, that was awesome. Where's the, that was easy button. I'll take the pieces back out. There's my bearing, and I have a uh, 
a shim that I need to save. And it just sits on there. So I will have some some pictures at the end, but you can see that bearing is toasted. But that tool is slick. Um, I've always been the guy that um, used a high speed and then eventually hit it with a chisel and cracked it and pulled it off that way. But, you know, keep this clean. No, no chance of damaging the, the, the bearing, the, the flange surface on the, uh, my brand new differential. So that went well. And uh, that tool was well worth it. So next, you're going to see me with the new bearing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to heat up the new bearing. And I'm hoping it goes on with little or minimal force. Uh, the new bearing is still coming. So here we are in the garage, cooking with Curbmeister. Got the wife's toaster oven. Today we are going to be cooking some really nice tapered roller bearings. So I have the toaster oven. I'm going to shoot for 250 degrees. I got a digital infrared thermometer. I have my differential clean, all ready to go. Of course, I got some leather gloves. I set up a punch with the correct driver and a hammer. I'm thinking that it's going to expand and it's going to go on there very nicely. But I still want to a couple times just to be sure it's seated. I have a new bearing and I have some mechanics lube. So here's a better look at things. Might as well start this oven up. That's 250 degrees. I have no idea how long it will take to uh, reach that temperature. So this is my differential. This is a new differential, limited slip. It's a wave track. And there is a shim on here. And it's important to notice that there's a bevel. And it goes on one way. See, there's no bevel there. There's a bevel on that surface, and you want that because this is beveled also. So, bevel side down, and everything's been cleaned and inspected, and that's ready. Got my Milwaukee uh, heat gun, 68 degrees here. Of course, I got my um, mechanics lube. Right there, 55 degrees, but I think it's a little bit low there. And I, I have a driver set up. I want to I want to seat it. I want to hear it seat, but I'm thinking that it'll, it will expand enough that it'll pretty much drop on there. And I've been reading on it, and you don't want to go over 250 degrees, so. I'll shoot for 225 to 250, and I will tap it a couple times. Two bearings. Let's see if you can see them babies. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, one is new. One is used. I'll be putting the new one on. So there's, this is the new bearing. Might as well throw this baby in there. Okay, you can uh, just barely see the bearing in there. And it was like 220. And so, put my gloves on. And uh, this is my first time ever heating a bearing and... Um, 
sliding it on or pressing it on. But it's been about 40 minutes, and I did turn the temperature up past uh, 250. So, you know, maybe I should have started it out with maybe like 300 or something. But anyway, here goes nothing. Oh, look at that. And I do have a brass, but it, it sounded like it went all the way down. Yeah. That's it. It's seated. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. New bearing. And uh, that part is good. Thank you, toaster oven. Ding. Yeah, I never... I've always been the guy that pounded them down and you had to be careful if you had any kind of angle, you had to be straight on. And this is way better. I, I finished the loom on my um, engine. I'll, I'll walk around and show you that. And um, did the brakes on my vet and been doing some other stuff. But um, I'll uh, take you around the garage and show you what's been happening. And oh. all right, look at the engine. So. It may look kind of crazy, but uh, these wires are, are going to be fed by a bus bar. These are all power wires, and I'll cut them to length when I get it in the car because I haven't mounted the bus bar yet. There's two uh, leads to the computer here, and my excess wire is in here because not everything is a perfect length. But um, it's all nicely loomed. And uh, pretty much ready to go back in. So, uh, oh, I, I actually pinned everything and verified that I, I still had the right wire going in the right place. And just barely started back here. Um, yeah, not too much to report. But it isn't too much to do. And I just got to kind of untangle. And it's just, there's wires going back and forth. And then there's a few, uh, anything that's pink or red is power. And I'm going to have a um, bus bar somewhere in this area over here. In fact, I've got the bus bar in here. Nothing too fancy, but I'll be able to hook uh, eight or ten wires to that, and I'll put, be putting it back in. All right, that's it, guys. Definitely recommend using heat to put a bearing on. So easy. No damage. It's the way to go. So thanks for watching. Like and like and subscribe if you like the video. Um, leave me a comment, question, ideas. Love to get new ideas. And as always, Curbmeister Klotz saying, keep the shiny side up and your nuts tight. <laughs>